Hi, Dr. Lily here with my pocket pediatrician. I've been quiet for a long time now. I've had a lot going on lately and my videos have been kind of low on the priority list. However, today's message is so important that I found myself really needing to talk to you. We're talking today about the novel coronavirus or COVID-19. We all know this virus first showed up in Wuhan, China in December 2019 and is now causing devastation across the world. Currently, 119 out of the 195 countries in the world have reported test positive cases. Globally, there are over 157,000 cases and almost 6,000 deaths. There are over 3,700 cases in the United States and 65 deaths so far. I started writing this for you this morning and these numbers have increased significantly in the last few hours. The cases in the U.S. span across 54 states and territories, which means if the virus isn't in your area yet, it likely will be soon. Most schools are canceled for the foreseeable future and sporting events, religious gatherings, and major conferences are all canceled or postponed. Disney World and Disneyland are closed. The NBA, NHL, and MLS have suspended their seasons. We're talking about millions to billions of dollars of impact on the economy. A few weeks ago, a neighbor asked me if I was worried about the coronavirus. I told her I was washing it cautiously, but not too worried for our sake at that time. We've had plenty of global outbreaks that never really reached us. Then I started seeing some really terrifying reports about what was happening in Italy and Iran, and it started to seem a whole lot more real. Numbers started climbing in Italy and then in Washington state. Cases got a whole lot closer to home and our death toll started rising. People started flooding into the hospitals asking to be tested, but we didn't have the tests available. Those numbers are climbing every single day. I posted on Facebook last Thursday about my mom when we were in chemo and about how the people who were most vulnerable to corona were reacting with kindness and helping each other and how maybe we could try and spread kindness and courtesy instead of all the fear and panic. Today, I woke up to the news that two American emergency physicians are in critical condition from COVID-19. This virus is spreading and while it's only a cold in most people, it seems to be releasing what's called a cytokine storm in others. This storm can lead to multi-system organ failure and acute respiratory distress syndrome. For the patients who need to be hospitalized, a large portion of them need ventilators in order to breathe and survive. According to the American Hospital Association, we have just over 900,000 hospital beds in America. We have almost 100,000 critical care beds spread among all the specialties in critical care. There are about 170,000 ventilators available for use in the US, but here's the thing, we have over 300 million people. We're looking at what happened in China, in South Korea, and in Italy. Their hospitals were overrun with patients. There weren't enough ventilators. They set up mobile hospitals and parking lots and other places, and healthcare workers are being forced to choose who lives and who dies. You might be sitting here thinking, but that's there, it's far away, our healthcare system is far more advanced than theirs. If you just had those thoughts, then what would you say if I told you they actually have more hospital beds per person there than we do here? Would that change your behavior today? When people are talking about flattening the curve, this is what it means. If we don't take protective measures like hand washing, social distancing, and isolating ourselves, then our cases will climb exponentially. We will very quickly have far more people with the disease than we can handle. If the ventilators are all occupied and you decide to travel for spring break anyway and you get in a car accident, do you think they're going to unplug someone else to give you a chance to recover from your car accident? What about all the ventilators that are currently in use for people who need them outside of the COVID-19 patients? The premature babies, the children with heart conditions, the adults with advanced pulmonary diseases and other processes like cancer that are keeping them on the ventilators. I've been reading articles on how to adapt a single ventilator and split it among four people. That's what your healthcare workers are considering right now, while people are hoarding masks, gloves, and hand sanitizer away from the people on the front lines. A physician friend of mine asked people to drop off supplies on her porch, no questions asked, so that she could bring them to work so that the doctors and nurses and the others caring for people have a fighting chance. We've seen how infective this virus is. We've seen how deadly it can be. If we all maintain social distance, we may be able to prevent that huge swoop on the curve and stay below the line of overwhelming our resources. I'm not saying order hazmat suits and put yourself in a bubble. There's a really funny video out there on panic mode versus moron mode that you may want to check out. I'm just saying we're learning more and more about this virus every single day. We know that people ages 20 to 29 can be the greatest carriers of it. We know that while the elderly and immunocompromised are the most affected, it can actually affect perfectly healthy young people and that they may need ventilators and critical care to survive. We know it can kill our doctors and nurses and other healthcare workers, and yet they are still heading bravely into work every day. 
I want to leave you with the best piece of advice I heard today on social distancing from an infectious disease specialist on BBC, Professor Graham Medley. So most people have a fear of acquiring the virus. I think a good way of doing it is to imagine that you do have the virus yeah, and change your behavior so that you're not transmitting it. Don't Stay home, avoid crowds, and spend some time with your family. There are lots of free resources on homeschooling for your kids, fun activities, and social distancing ideas all over the internet. You can declutter, cook together, read books, pray, stream religious online services, do all the things you'd like to do together as a family. You can even go for walks or hikes in uncrowded areas, but a good rule of thumb is to stay at least six feet away from others. I know this is hard on everyone. I know there are some huge financial ramifications for a lot of families, but think about the ramifications of losing a member of your family or more. Think about what will happen if we don't have enough hospital beds or ventilators for those who need them. Think about who will take care of you if all of our healthcare workers are infected. If you have ideas or resources that will help others, please share them in the comments below. We don't know yet where this is going. We do know that the power to slow it down lies within our ability to distance ourselves right now. I really hope and pray that we can slow this down enough that we can look back and say, wow, we did all that distancing and hoarding for absolutely nothing, because that surely beats the alternative of looking back and wishing we had acted sooner. This is Dr. Lilly with my pocket pediatrician. Thanks for stopping by.